Okay, Year 10. Uh, I'm going to go back. Um, well, I'm going to talk about now the next exercise in what we have to do, which is the hyperbola. And if I look at the, the notes, we're going to skip the uh, Cranbrook worksheets and not... You can do them if you wish, but I'm going to take you through it anyway. So we're going to start with just sketching these things. So we're going to go to Desmos, but first of all, we, we just want to look at how we can write this. And if you're sitting in the advanced course, you will know or in the 5.3 course that we have several ways we can write our index. So we can write y equals 1 on x. And that's the same as y equals x to the negative 1. Uh, we can multiply that x across. So our standard way of writing it is y equals 1 on x. But if I multiply that x over here, I can write it as x, y equals 1. Or if I write it in index notation, I can write it as y equals x to the negative 1. It's easier to look at it in this form because as a fraction, looking at that denominator is going to help us. So let's have a look at Desmos. And here it is. Now, I've put a K on top of the X, so it's going to slide. So that's going to increase and decrease in value. So let's slide that K now. And as K gets bigger, the curve extends out. And then when it gets negative, it goes to the other two corners. So as K gets smaller, it goes towards zero and sort of pushes in and pushes out. Let's... Uh, zoom in on that and see if we can see it. So the curve doesn't really change shape all that much. It's just pushing it in and pushing it out a little bit. Okay. Let's go back here. So our standard hyperbola. So this number on top, right, which is what we were just playing with, this number on top doesn't change it altogether too much. So I'm going to use blue. The curve looks like this, our standard hyperbola. And it looks like this. Put arrows on. Now, there is one thing that you need to realise, and that is there are things called asymptotes. Here they are here. And the asymptote is... A point that the curve can't touch. Now, if I look at y equals 1 on x, well, what values exist for x that will make that impossible? Straight away you should be thinking, well, x can't equal 0 because I can't divide by 0. So x equals 0 is this line down here. And we're going to call that our asymptote. And we're going to dot it. And it's very important. Now, by the same way I can write y equals 1 on x, I can multiply the x across and get xy equals 1. And I can write it as x equals 1 on y. So the same thing happens. y cannot equal zero. So I get an asymptote, asymptote along here. And they're the crucial parts, those two asymptotes. So let's go to the next one. I'm going to write this one the way that we like it. I'm just going to divide that x. I'm going to y equals 2 on x. And we know that that doesn't change it very much. It just pushes it out a bit more. still exists here and here, and x can't equal 0, and y can't equal 0. All right, so that's pretty standard. Now, the negative one. Well, we saw that. We saw that, that that exists in here. Oh, come on. In here. And here. Now, to, oh, by the way, an asymptote means that the curve approaches that but never reaches it. It can't touch it. 
So the asymptotes again are there and there. Now if you can find these asymptotes, the points that the curve can't touch, you're away. So there are the first three. They're our standard. Standard rectangular hyperbola. Now, what happens if I do this? Now, you should be getting very good at this now, going, oh, that just moves the curve up one. I'd really like you to think, I'd really like you to think like this. Take that one over the other side. Because you need to think about what makes that zero. And it's y equals one. So what we do, we move the curve up one. So the asymptote goes up one. It hasn't moved anywhere with the x. I have to label that as a point one. And I now just draw the same curve. It's got a two on top, so it's just this curve here. It's just this curve here moved up. Oh, that's really bad. Now the problem is, I'm going to get an intercept here, which I have to find. So how do I find that? Well, I let y equal 0, and I solve it. So 0 equals 2 on x plus 1. I'll take that 1 over the other side. Minus 1 equals 2 on x. I multiply that x across, so I get minus 1x equals 2, and I divide by the minus 1, so x equals minus 2. Now straight away, my curve does not look good, so I'm going to fix this one up, because I know it goes through 2, which is about there. Well, that's really bad. That'll have to do very hard on this screen. So there's that one. Okay. Two to go, three to go. So this one, this one is the same curve but moved down one. So I'm going to put that there, that there. This point goes like that. Oh, that looks a bit bad. Try and draw it as neatly as you can. And this one is going to go there. Now, again, I have to find that point. So what is it? Well, let's let y equals 0. So you get 0 equals 2 on x minus 1, add the 1 over, 1 equals 2 on x, multiply the x across, x equals 2. Righto. This one. Now we're getting really smart. Remember that 3 will just make it go in or out. There's nothing with the y, but I've got the x here. Now, which way does that move it? You think about that. Pause the video, see if you can think about it. So if you've come back now, the easiest way to think about that is what makes that equal zero? Because you can't divide by zero and negative one. So x can't equal negative one. So it moves at one to the left. The y can't equal zero because that whole thing will swap. What's this? I'll do it over here. I've got y equals 3 on x plus 1. I'm going to multiply the x plus 1 across. x plus 1 times y equals 3. So x plus 1 equals 3 on y. So the y can't equal 0. It's a positive hyperbola, so it's the same shape. So it's going through there and there. Now there are no intercepts on the left hand side but I've got to find this value. How do I find that? I let x equal 0. 
So y equals 3 on 0 plus 1 is 3 on 1, which equals 3. And mine doesn't look really good to scale, so I'd probably change that a little bit and make it go right up there. Up there to three. Okay, so finding these points, these asymptotes are important. Okay, this one. I want you to try and think, have a go at yourself. I want you to try and think as that as one thing and that as one thing. Okay, well, what's happened here? All right, what can't equal zero? Well, x can't equal two because I'll divide by zero. So I've got a point here at 2 that x cannot equal. What can't y equal? Well, y can't equal 3. It's a positive hyperbola, so it just sits. I'm going to put some more dots up there. It just sits in here. Well, that part's all right. But it's going to cut here and here, and I have to find those values. How do I find those values? Well, the first one, let y equal zero, and that will give me this one here. So I get zero minus three, and this is a harder one to do, one on x minus two, minus three equals one on x minus two. Now I'm gonna multiply this whole thing over here. So minus 3 times x minus 2 equals 1. Minus 3x plus 6 equals 1. Take the 6 over the other side. Minus 3x equals 5, because I'm minus, negative 5, because I'm minus the 6. x equals 5 on 3. The negatives will cancel. Negative 5 on 3 if you really want me to which gives you five on three, which is one and two thirds. So this value is one and two thirds. Now that was a harder of the two to do. If I let x equals zero, it's much easier. I get y minus three, equals 1 on 0 minus 2. y minus 3 equals 1 on negative 2. y minus 3 equals negative a half. Add the 3 over. y equals 2 and a half. And although it's not to scale, I'm not going to change it. Actually, go in here, make that a bit better. Well, I can change it. So let's see how I go. So, two and a half is about there. And there we go. All right. The last one. Okay. This is going to be a negative parabola, um, negative hyperbola. Look, there's a negative sign. So it's going to sit in here and here. I just have to work out where the asymptotes are, and I have to work out um, the intercepts. So let's have a go. First of all, I'm going to take this 2 over the other side, put it with the y. So I'm going to get y plus 2 equals negative. 3 on x plus 1. And now it's easy because I'm just thinking what makes that equal 0 and what makes that equal 0. You think about that and see if you can work it out. Pause it, draw it, come back. All right, so the first one, y can't equal negative 2. So I've got at negative 2. x can't equal negative 1. It's a negative hyperbola, so it's sitting 
in here and in here. So I need to find this point and this point. How do I find those? Let y equals zero. Now I get zero equals negative three on x plus one minus two. Add the two over. Two equals negative three x plus one. Multiply that x plus one over the other side. Two x plus one equals negative three. Two x plus two equals negative three. Minus the 2. 2x two equals negative 5. Divide by the 2. x equals negative 2 and a half. Well, so this is negative 2 and a half. One more equals 0. Righto. Let's let x equals 0. And I get y equals negative 3 on 0 plus 1 minus 2. y equals negative 3 on 1 minus 2. y equals negative 3 minus 2 equals negative 5. So this value is negative 5. Now look at that. Not even close to scale. So now I know all of that. I might just tidy this up a bit and make it look more to scale. It's going to be hard, but you want to make sure it's right. So I'm going to put there, there's my negative one. One, two, and make my negative two there. And then I've got three, four, I'm going to extend this, five will be about there. Two, two and a half will be about there. That goes in there. I'm going to extend this bit here. And that goes down there. And that's five, negative. And that's negative two and a half. Now that is extremely hard. That is a very complicated, difficult curve to sketch. And if you are good with that, you tick the right top one there. However, remember, it's not about just doing the hard ones. You need to be able to do the simple ones. All right, good luck with that.